Welcome. My name's Kayleigh Spring and I'm an Objects Conservator for the Conservation and Museums Advisory Service, which we refer to as CMAS. I'm going to be talking to you about the conservation treatment of a pair of Pele's football boots, looking at the techniques used and how conservators approach their work. We are based in the Wiltshire and Swindon History Centre in Chippenham, which acts as an archive for Wiltshire holding records covering eight miles of shelving and spanning over 800 years of history. The CMAS team consists of a mix of specialists, archive conservators who look after the archive held in the building, as well as undertaking commercial work, objects conservators such as myself, who work on a wide variety of 3D objects from local museums, archaeological units, historic houses and private individuals and a museum development officer who provides invaluable advice and guidance to our local museums. But enough about us, let's move on to Pele. For those of you who don't know, Pele is a Brazilian footballer, considered one of the best footballers in the world. He came to fame in the 1958 World Cup, where he scored two of the five goals which led to Brazil's victory over Sweden. He retired in 1977 and has since been a worldwide ambassador for football. A pair of his football boots went up for auction in 2016. As you can see from the catalogue photo, deterioration was already visible on the plastic soles of the shoes in the form of a white powdery substance. The exact date of these boots was unknown. However, it was clear that they had been worn from a blade of grass that remained on the base of the boots. The boots came to CMAS in 2017 from a private collector with the intention that they would go on display at the National Football Museum. Unfortunately, their condition had deteriorated even further with large sections of plastic missing on the soles and the remaining cracked with a hard white blooming on the surface. It was established that areas of loss would need to be filled in order for remaining plastic to be stable. You can also see on these images the location of the blade of grass circled in blue. A treatment plan needed to be put together before any treatment could begin. Any treatment plan undertaken begins with some form of research. Plastics are very much an emerging area in conservation so information and research is limited. Plastics are also very complicated as they tend to be made up of many components, such as the plastic base material, plasticizers, and any fillers or additives. Unfortunately, the company that manufactured the boots had no information about the composition of the soles, and often this information is considered proprietary by the makers. FDIR analysis which uses infrared light to scan samples, was carried out for us by the VNA to help identify what was present. They identified the plastic as polyurethane ester and the white blooming as suburic acid, a known plasticizer in plastic manufacturing. It is important to have an understanding of the material being treated in order to establish why the material is damaged or broken down. Plastics actually deteriorate very quickly due to the fact that the components within the plastic are fighting against each other. What materials you can and can't use with the object. The deterioration of polyurethane ester is accelerated by moisture, so contact needs to be avoided. And how the material might behave in the future. Polyurethane ester could off-gas harmful substances when aging. So we need to ensure the leather and any other materials are protected. Before treatment begins, we provide a quote to the client outlining the treatment plan, what treatment will be carried out, any costings and ensuring we get approval by the client. There are three main areas we consider in our treatment plans. The first being stabilisation. The majority of work we carry out involves some form of stabilisation. This is to ensure active deterioration has been halted as much as possible and anything that may cause further deterioration has been removed. For example, cleaning the surface 
and preventing further loss of the original plastic on the boots. Sometimes this may be the only level of treatment carried out, particularly if an object is going straight into appropriate storage and not going on display. Treatment may be taken to the next level if an object is required to go on display. This is where the main ethical concerns come into play for a conservator. A conservator's aim is to ensure treatments are reversible, retain original material and can be identified as additions. We would tend to avoid restoration that might make the boots look new, often replacing original material. However, sometimes objects require a much more decorative finish to ensure fill materials do not detract from the original object, as seen on highly decorative ceramic pieces. And finally, a continual challenge for conservators is implementing preventive conservation measures to prolong the life of an object. This can involve producing physical supports or protection for an object, or controlling the environment an object is stored or displayed in. Having had approval from the client, treatment began with removing the layer of white blooming seen on the plastic soles. The bloom was assessed to ensure it was safe to remove, and tests were carried out to find a suitable solvent to dissolve it. The solvent was applied with a stiff brush to offer a certain amount of abrasive quality. And removing the blooming actually helped identify a potential date for the boots. Written in pen, the year 1969 could be seen, circled in blue on the photo. The next stage was consolidating the remaining plastic to prevent further loss. Based on research, an acrylic based adhesive was chosen. This adhesive was suitable due to the fact that it is durable, non-yellowing and would offer the strength required to keep the plastic attached. It can also be dissolved in a solvent so it could be applied with a thin brush in between the cracks of the plastic. When it came to filling the areas of loss on the boots, there was also certain requirements for the fill material. It needed to be a clean fill so that it didn't spill over onto the plastic during application. It also needed to stick to itself so that the fill could be applied in stages if needs be. The surface also needed to be reworkable so that details such as the studs could be added on. It also needed to be flexible so that the material would flex with the movement of the leather and not crack. I carried out some testing on different materials from research and what we had available in the lab. First of all, I looked for a material that had flexibility. I filled small containers with the chosen materials, allowed them to set for 24 hours and then tried snapping them. The majority snapped very easily or crumbled. The only two that seemed more workable were both acrylic based adhesives. I then looked for how I could shape the fill. I wanted something that was like a putty that could be moulded into the desired shape. Options were mixed with an inert filler material and pigments and then shaped into missing areas for comparison. The best choice ended up being a workable putty which maintained some flexibility once set and details could be added. However, there were some concerns with the chosen material. The material was water-based and we know that the plastic deteriorates more rapidly when exposed to moisture. To overcome this, the leather and plastic were sealed where it would be in contact with the fill material. The boots were also covered in cling film during moulding. The fill also had a matte finish in comparison to the original plastic and the colour of the fill stood out a bit too much from the original material. To overcome this, I used an acrylic adhesive diluted in a solvent to add a satin appearance to the material. By combining this with pigments, I could give the fill a much more toned in appearance. And here you can see the boots after treatment. The leather has been cleaned and internal supports made of an inert material put inside the boots to support the structure. You will also notice, circled in blue, the area where the blade of grass is located has been left unfilled and untouched 
in order to preserve the historic significance and show the use of the boots. The final stage was packaging. The boots required temporary packaging before going on display. As we know from the research, polyurethane ester may off-gas harmful substances and moisture can encourage deterioration. So absorbent materials needed to be added to the sealable packaging. Metal tokens and a humidity indicator card monitor any off-gassing and humidity levels. Thank you very much for your time. I hope this presentation has given you some insight into the conservation process and a behind the scenes look at a fascinating object. If you have any follow up questions or would like to contact CMAS about an object of your own, please email us at cmas at wiltshire.gov.uk.